Hello there, my name is Lemon Jai. So today I am with Mr. or Honorable Seku Marong. Honorable Marong is the National Assembly member for Latikunda Savage. I will be speaking to this lawmaker on his life as a lawmaker, but also his relationship with the United Democratic Party as well as his relationship with President Adama Barrow. Honorable Maro, thank you very much for agreeing to speak to us there. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Njai, for this opportunity. So uh, first, um, your problems with the United Democratic Party. By the grace of this party, you are who you are today. But your relationship with the UDP is anything but good. Tell us, what really is the problem? Well, thank you very much. I think this is a very important question that you put, uh, put to me, talking about my relationship with the party, because I, can, I always remind people still, Honorable Sekou Morong is still the National Assembly member for Latikunda Sabiji, and I'm still under the ticket of UDP. So if you tell me your relationship with UDP, I really, sometimes I, I don't understand. Because one thing I want people to understand is that everybody has his own opinion, everybody has his own way of thinking. If my thinking, this is how I think, is different from the way you think doesn't mean that I am not part of the party. I have my own philosophy and I work towards that one. I have my principle. I'm a principle mind, my principle person, and I work towards my principle. But to me, I didn't have any relationship. People might say that you know, Honorable Marong is not attending UDP programs, Honorable Marong is not doing for UDP, and he's not doing that one. The simple reason why I'm not doing this is very, very simple. It's because I have been to UDP organizations where I was not treated fairly. I can say, for see. Because I could remember I had been to a meeting in Wellingara, which I just took it upon myself to attend that meeting. And at that meeting, what I received was in the bad comment anyway. Because at that meeting, when I left, because what I told them is I'm going to the airport, then I have someone that I'm going to pick from the airport. So when I left from the meeting, I, the meeting was so interested, I said, let me just follow the meeting online, because there is this online TV that are showing it. Yes. Upon, upon my way going, and I had a voice behind saying, why is Honorable Sekumarong? Let him talk, let us you know, set him up. So that was a disaster to me. I still asked myself, what kind of setup are you talking about? And before that also, I went to Basse, you know, upon my arrival, when I came back home, it was on social media that people are saying that, uh, you know, all sorts of names where I was given all sorts of names. These are all UDP militants. But, but, but then, uh, you know, in any group, mm -hmm. political parties, there are what are called rules and regulations. You've got to find a way of working within those rules and regulations. But here is a party who is accusing you, and not just you, but other National Assembly members of effectively breaking away from the party. You have, in fact, shifted your allegiance to elsewhere. What do you say to that? Well, anything, what I, what I want to tell you about that one, when that news uh, emerged, that was a CRN meeting, when the, the party leader because Honorable Sirudabo talked about it. He didn't mention my name. He didn't mention anybody's name. He just says that a breakaway MPs. It's the following day that standard newspaper pick it up and then publish it on their headlines. Honorable Sekumala, Honorable Fatumada Jawara, Honorable Sekuba Jayu, and Honorable Alaji Jawara are the breakaway MPs. But, but then, but then uh, Honorable... No, uh, just wait, I'm coming. One doesn't need to... Uh, uh, you know, travel very far to know who these people were. Yeah, definitely you don't need to travel far to know that Sekou Marong support President Adapabaru. He's the sitting president. He's the president that I campaigned for. He is the president who inspired me to contest under the ticket of UDP to become mm -hmm. a, a member of a parliament. Because before I wasn't thinking about it. Because when he came in office as a president, I say that, yes, we the young ones, we have the opportunity. Now I can put up my candidature and see, and then fight for the position in the parliament. That was all possible because of His Excellency President Adam Baro. So what I want people to understand, you know, I am somebody that uh, I support President Baro, yes. I supported him. He is a president of the Republic of the Gambia. I campaigned for him. So I will not just leave him there, saying that he's a president, he's that, he's that. No, I am not that type. He didn't show me that. I am going to support him so that he but, can but, achieve but, what but, he wants. But here is the thing. The agenda of President Adam Abaro is different from the agenda of the United Democratic Party. So um, you cannot push two agendas at the same time. That's practically impossible. Okay. I think that is where the problem is. You cannot be a member of the UDP, a National Assembly member at that, 
and be saying I support President Adam Barrow when in fact these two are strange bedfellows? Well, I think we have to be careful when we are analyzing this issue. Where I am supporting is where the interest of the Gambia is. I am not supporting where the interest of UDP is, I am not supporting where the interest of President Adam Obaro is. I am supporting where the, uh, the interest of the country is. That is, I take it upon myself to say that I am going to support to make sure that this NDP that the President is talking about is implemented to the foolish. So when I am doing that one, I didn't see that as a, any crime. Says that this is not the policy of UDP or this is not the policy of uh, Adam Obaro. The UDP policy is to develop the country, is to push the NDP forward. So if I am doing that one, I see no reason why people should accuse me of all kinds of names, all kinds of things. And then in fact, up to the extent of insulting but, but, me... But, but as, uh, uh, given your standing, someone would expect Sekou Marong to be, you know, pushing the agenda of UDP, for example, because here's a party that is not in good terms with the president. So what they, the party, is only natural that the party expects you to be pushing its agenda at any given opportunity but from the look of things that is what the party is not getting from you okay let me and as a result this is where what it has led to okay let me put this to you not so tell me what is the agenda seven. of udp then let me understand the agenda of the udp yes. now yes. is to see how best the party can be a force to be reckoned with. Okay. The party now effectively is not in government. Okay. You've seen the party's executive that were members of um, cabinet sacked, including the leader of the party. So now the party is trying to gain ground, finding ways and means of bouncing back. And they need its members, including those who hold position of power. So these positions of power, including you, who is fortunate enough to have that that standing, they expect you to be there, out there, to be looking out for the interests of the party. But from the look of things, that is not what is happening. Well, I think to put this to you, if you tell me the policy of UDP, uh, let me start by telling you, UDP is still part and parcel of this government, because UDP is a stakeholder in the coalitions. And this is still a coalition government. I just want you to understand that point. Up to now, as I am speaking to you, this is a coalition government. We all many parties come together to form this government. It's a coalition government. Whether one's like it or not, this is it. And then if you tell me But again, UDP, UDP and PDIS appear appear to have left this abandoned this coalition. So to I mean people still go about politicians still go about saying, Oh, it is a coalition government when what we have seen is an executive president who does whatever he she he wants to do, who goes about sacking this coalition stakeholders who in fact helped him be, be, be president? Well, I think in a, in a uh, fact of the matter here, of him being an executive president, let us ask ourselves, why is he an executive president today? When he was coming in office, we all know that he come as a coalition president. So why all of a sudden he's an executive president? Because let's say X, Y, and Z were left behind. This is why he become an executive president today. So in analyzing our issues, we have to be very, very honest and we have to be very, very straightforward to analyzing some certain issue. The reason why the President Adam Oboro, His Excellency President Adam Oboro, become an executive president is because of we did not adhere, adhere the coalition did not adhere to the, uh, the agreement of the coalition. The what, what, and what was that, do you know? Well, uh, today, you know, if you look at the coalition agreement, all what they're saying today, the composition of the executives, all what they've agreed upon, you know, we find out that most of those issues are left behind. They've not been fulfilled. This is why today President Adam Abaro is an executive president. If though all those ones were fulfilled since onset, I think President Barrow today will not be an executive president as we claim. The issue of three years, five years will not come into in play. Because we will know that he's not an executive president. At the end of his time, he's going to do this when he's a transitional leader on their serving under the coalition. But let us not also forget that President Barrow also resigned from a political party because of their coalition agreement. So the way he resigned from that uh, political party, then there was a coalition agreement, everybody agreed upon it. And then we go outside and then we vote. That agreement should have continued up till today. If that's happened, the problem that we are facing today will not have happened. And then in fact, the idea of President Barrow being an executive president will not have happened. We don't talk about that today. I'll, I'll still bring you back to you and the UDP. Um, double through the gauntlet. I mean, you are saying that the standard, it was the standard newspaper that went and reported that Honorable Sekou and these other MPs were the rebel MPs. But I think a lot of Gambians 
had, had an idea as to who really Dabo was referring to. He threw the gauntlet at, to you and others at a meeting in Sierra, uh, I think that was in, in, at a rally there in, in July, um, by, you know, challenging you to, to resign and, and take part in a fresh election. What, 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 well, do, what well, do you say well, to that? Let me, let me remind you again that Dabo didn't mention my name. Yes. And that is my stand. Neither but, did he, no, wait. Neither did he mention the name of Fatima yes. Jawara. Yes. Alaji Jawara, Alaji Da, Alaji Honorable Alaji Jawara, Honorable Sefu Bai Chaju. Dabo didn't mention any name. Yes. It but, was on the following week that the uh, Standard newspaper picked it up and says that um, so, 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 X, Y, and Z, uh, this, and then Dabo, the president, uh, Dabo is suffering to them. But Dabo himself didn't mention my name. But but, but then but then you, you and then Lord, you just wait. Let me just let me just conclude it. Great. And then if you look at that one, that statement that happened at a CRL meeting, as I said, that would not mention our name. Our names were published by Standard Newspaper. I would not know how Standard Newspaper got that name. They might have got it from somewhere else, from a good source. I never know about that one, and I didn't bother myself to. Uh, talk about that one. And also you talk about the prayer, Dabo says that if you uh, believe in your popularity, you should resign and go back to buy elections and then see whether you're popular. As I always said, I was at the Bureau of Media and Empowerment. I had an interview which was put, uh, which was pick up and then it was published on Standard I was Newspaper. going there. That was what yeah. I did. Let me, you let seem, I'll, you I'll, 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 repeat, I'll repeat what I said. There. Yes, I'll, I'll, I think I have the what you well, I have I'll what you said. What I said. You there. said is that you what said, I say is that if the, anybody want to know my popularity, you wait for 2021 or 2022 elections. That's when you know whether I'm popular or not. But right now, I'm not moving an inch. It's the people of Latikunda Sabi that voted for me in to serve them and to serve their interests. And I believe, with all honesty, I am doing that one. So if you expect that I should resign from my position, wait for 2021 or wait for 2022 parliamentary elections. You have you, your card. You said more. Yeah. And then I have a quote on what this is. But then this is what you said. Yes. Uh, in an interview mm -hmm. with, uh, I think, the standard, you said the 2021 National Assembly um, election will demonstrate to people who I am yeah. and who the people of Latikunda Sabiji are. Exactly. I am coming back. Yeah. I will win again. And if anyone doubts that, let them wait for me at the polls. And let me, so repeat, let me, let me echo. There, huh? Let me echo with confidence that anybody who doubt my word, that I say that I will come back in 2021 or 2022, Inshallah, with the help of Allah. Yes. If anybody doubts that one, wait for me at the pool. Yes. I am confident, I am 100% confident that I am going back to the parliament. Because, let me repeat it again, the people of Latikunda Sabi know exactly what I am doing. But you, you got your political windfall from UDP. So do you think the UDP, the way and manner you're going about it, the UDP voters in Latikunda Sabi would have that confidence in you again? Someone who they see as a threat, a clear threat, because someone who they see pushing the agenda of a political rival in President Adam Abaro. Do you think these people uh, would, 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 would vote for you again? Okay, it is important for us, for us to, do, uh, to sensitize people to know who to vote in office. The person to be voted in office should be those that, are, that have allegiance to our, uh, our national interest. That's the interest of Latikun. Those who are serving the utmost interest of Latikun are Sabi. But so, no, you just wait. Don't just say that because of UDP and I'm not going for, to vote for me. If I give you a brief history of Latikuna Sabi, how this comes. My, the difference between myself, UDP candidate at Latikuna Sabi and APRC was like 200 and something votes. PPP have a vote in Latikuna Sabi. UDC have a lot of vote in Latikuna Sabi. NRP has a vote in Latikuna Sabi. GPDP have a vote in Latikuna Sabi. So putting all those things together, you find out that UDP is still not a majority in Latikuna Sabi. It's just politics. But they are not. But the only time that we will know that UDP is going to be the majority of Latikunda Sabiji, that's why I say that let us wait till 2021. Then you will know who is Honorable Sheikh tomorrow. Whether really people are going to vote for him. But if you just preempt things right now and say that but I am not popular but Honorable, or I'm not coming to back, come back. Know, do you know that Gambian voters vote along party lines? Not necessarily what the interest of the country is about. But do you, you also, know that? You also have to know that not everybody vote by the party line. People vote by the competent. They look at the competent of people. I am in the parliament for these five years. At the end of the day, I'm going to be judge of what I did during my, term, uh, my tenure in office. That's the five years that I spent in office. What have I done for my people? What did I contribute toward the socioeconomic development of this country? At the end of the day, I believe 
and I can echo this thing. I believe and I will say it with confidence that people are going to look at that and people of Latakunda Sabi are going to look at that So one. far, so far, what have you done for your constituency? Well, I think that's a very important question that you put forward so far. This is why I'm speaking with confidence. If you look at the Latakunda Sabi before I, when I come in office, I have contributed a lot. But I am not, I didn't have a budget. Let me put, that, uh, put this to people to understand. I didn't have a budget. There is no budget line for National Assembly that they can uh, make a development, but we can lobby. And through that lobby, Latakunda Sabiji market today is under construction and it's nearly completion. And then thanks to KMC, Kanifi Municipal Council, and then uh, GAM Works Agency, Latakunda Sabiji wearing a road is under construction. And once again, also thanks to KMC, GAM Works, and become an area council. Now, uh, Kyrgyzstan Road going towards Abuko is under completion thanks to National Road Authority. So these are all achievements. It doesn't always stop that one, but if you ask me in reality what I have done in the parliament, I will tell you. The TRRC that is going on, constitutional TRRC, truth repatriation and uh, TRRC that is going on right now, I have contributed because it's an act of a parliament. Commission of Inquiry, I have contributed because it's an act of the parliament. National Human Rights Commission, I have contributed because it's an act of the parliament. L to name what many. So if you tell me what have, I, have, what have you done, this is what I tell you, at the end of the day, people are going to judge what you did during your tenure in office. And you have every confidence that people who have their parties, would abandon their parties, would not vote for their party, the, the candidates of their parties, but they would vote for you instead because of um, um, you helping in building a market in Latakuna, Savage, for example. Not exactly uh, people are going to abandon their office and then vote for me. What I'm trying to put up is that candidates put for, put forward. What I'm telling you, what I'm time. telling you now is that people are going to vote for who are competent to run their office. People are going to judge what did Honorable Maroon did during his tenure in office. And then I don't want to preempt that one. Let us, let us not preempt that one. The only time that we go, I will be very very happy talking about this one. Is let's wait for 2022 or 2021 parliamentary elections or campaign then you will know that what I'm saying, I believe in what I'm saying. And anywhere that I go, that I will keep echoing that. If you want to know my popularity, wait for 2021 or 2020. What, what does the political future look like for you? Because um, now it appears you, you don't even have a party. You are in UDP, but you are not in UDP. No. So that is what it looks like for me. So no, I, um, think, I think I will stop you there for you to... Can you withdraw that part, a statement that I don't have a party? No, you are a member of the UDP. Exactly. So that if you say you, I don't have a party, but this is a party yes. that does not that does not really appreciate you. You go to their what? meetings, they would they no, would no, no, they, no, would, no, they no, would call no, you no, names. No. You have to be in, in or they will say things no, that that's, that's you politics. don't like. That, that is politics. That is politics. That's how politics goes. Politics is a game. At the end of the day, the smart one will overcome the game and become the winners. No, but that can only okay. happen when you are, you know, in competition with your rival. But when you belong to a party. You don't, that, that's very uh, rare let for me, you let, to let, get let, 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 let me tell you something. Let me, I can tell you something. This is politics. There is no permanent uh, enemy in politics. Those who are opposing me today, they might be my friends. Those my friends can be my, those can be those, and, uh, at the end of the day, those are going to oppose me. So and, this is politics. So, so right now to conclude by saying that you are no more longer, but you are no uh, part of a UDP or you are that you don't have a political party. I think it will be. It is too early to talk about that issue now because right now, if I'm not member of UDP, I will not be a national assembly member for UDP. If I'm not member of UDP, UDP either will either have to resign me from the position or I have to resign from the position. Then, if you call me, but, on that, platform, but then that, that wouldn't make any difference because that, that law has been changed. Now you can no, be you know, a, a, a not, member of the national assembly. I'm not talking about. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, not being, a, being, being a member of yeah, UDP. What I'm telling Even you if here, UDP sacks you today, okay, what I'm telling you would still be member of parliament. Yeah, exactly what I'm saying. But then I will be a member of parliament, but not under UDP. This is what I'm trying to tell you. That then I will be a member of a parliament. Yes, because they don't have the power to dismiss me from parliament unless if I want to resign. Okay, but I'm telling you still. All my everything that I have is under UDP, Honorable Sekh Moro, National Assembly member for UDP. Even you, when you were introducing me, you say Honorable Sekh Moro, member of National Assembly for Latakula Savage under UDP ticket. If I am no longer part of UDP, you not you address me. I, like I, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure I said under UDP ticket. But Look, now let me bring you back to the meeting that took place in, in CRR. Okay. I think you attended that meeting, but at that meeting too, um, we understand uh, there were reports of, I mean, profanities 
being thrown at you. Not, what, not, what exactly not CRR. Happened? CRR meeting, I wasn't able to attend that CRR meeting because like uh, my wife delivered the naming ceremony, my daughter naming ceremony was on Wednesday and then Saturday was CRR meeting, I could not make it. But I was at the URR meeting that we had and URR. So uh, now talk to me about the money issue. Mm -hmm. You know, you, your name emerged as one of those MPs who have been going around taking money from President Adam Abaro. Is this true? That who is going around taking money from President Adam Barrow? Yes. Going around taking money from yes. President Adam Yes. Barrow. Well, I don't, I don't the think... The $10,000 reports. Did well, you I take don't, money I don't from think, I don't, the President? I don't think, let us be realistic here. Let us be honest here. This is more political than national issue. Let's look at our relationship, the relationship between UDP and, uh, uh, UDP and Adam Abaro. Was it the first ten thousand? Was it the only ten thousand dollars Adam Baru have ever given to UDP? Why are we not talking about the hundred fifteen thousand dollars that Adam Baru gave me, sponsor me for my political campaign? Why are we not talking about? Why are we silent about it? Instead, we're talking about the ten thousand dollars. But then that why are we, no, you just without, 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 Why why are we silent about the, the money that Adam Baru gives to the councillors? Why are we silent about the money that the president gives to the chairman, the chairman? The mayor, the mayors, and the mayors. But these are company. coalition monies. We understand these this are not necessarily President Barros' money. So if I tell you that the ten thousand, if money. I tell you that the ten thousand dollars is a coalition money, what would you say then? That cannot be possible because the, by that time the president had already become president and he was had started becoming an executive president. Look, I am, and he I am, was I'm a sitting into his own look, pocket. Let me, let me tell you something. And dishing out money. I, I'm, 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 I'm a sitting member of a parliament, and I benefited from that one hundred fifty thousand. And then nobody ever echoed to me that this is given to you by the coalition. But instead, I was told that this is given to you by His Excellency President Adam Abaru. So if you tell me that this is a coalition money, well, I'm surprised. I this is the first time I'm hearing I, this, I, this is a coalition money. I understand these ten thousand dollars that we are being dished out, that we are being doled out. Mm -hmm. uh, it was Lamin Cham, Lamin Cham who was who was fronting this. The, the able brown envelopes. It, they, yes, they the, the brown envelopes. It was Lamin Cham who would approach you one after the other and giving you this money some of course rejected but some of you took this money what were some of the things that lamin cham was saying well i cannot tell you some of the things that lamin cham was saying i don't know what lamin cham was saying but what i'm telling you is you don't know i don't what know what Cham. no Lam, i know he what didn't he, tell you anything no 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 no. what i'm telling you is that the issue of this ten thousand dollars is more of a political because look there's a lot of political party here and that's are in the coalitions if you tell me that this is a coalition issue uh, let's say this is UDP numbers that you're talking about. We have those guys that are in UDP, uh, that are in the coalition. PPP and then NRP are all in the coalition, isn't it? And then the 10,000 issue wasn't, they were not mentioned, isn't it? So this is why I'm telling you, this is more of a politic. Because what happened in those days, what, uh, the Congress was coming. And people believe that Adam Oboro is trying to buy our allegiance so that we can vote for him when, when we go to Congress without them understanding that. I am somebody who is a very, very independent-minded guy. Nobody can buy my uh, integrity or my allegiance towards anything. So you rejected those suggestions flatly. Suggestion of where I the suggestions of President if we are giving me money because money. of this. Yes, I totally reject it. The president did not give me any money looking for his. But then how to, how to do you how do you reconcile that with the fact that now you are somebody who is quite outspoken when it comes to supporting this president? Yeah. How do you reconcile let, let these let, two let, let, let me tell you something. I am very, very outspoken when it comes to defending the president and his, and his development agendas. And I can tell you, if I was doing it... But it this is, started only after the 10,000 started no, coming. No, no, not exactly. When it started, when the 10,000, the issue of 10,000. It doesn't start from there. I have the belief that I should defend the president in terms of this NDP, that's the National Development Plan, that all governments should join hands. Forget about all the difference. Push the country forward. Make sure that what we want in this country, we achieve it. And we can only de do this by supporting the president. And then when we say that we're supporting the president, I'm not saying that when the president is on the right or wrong direction, we're not going to support him. No. Okay? When the president is doing something that we know that is against the 1997 constitution of the Gambia, we're going to support him. No. I will never do that one. But let me tell you, and let me echo this clear, it will be very, very, very clear to everybody. I will and continue to support the president. In acts or acts, he is working towards the interests of the government people. But the president took certain moves, and these moves, moves were not quite popular, inclu including one, uh, I'll give you the sacking of Yaku Mbajede, for example. A lot of National Assembly members railed against this move. But did you support the president in firing Yaku Mbajede? 
Well, this is what people have to understand. I did not support the president in firing Yakuma Jude, but I want people to understand. It is the president. Uh, uh, it's the mandate of the president. It is the president who appointed Yakuma Jude. So when the issue of Yakuma Jude pop up, what I told them is very simple: National Assembly, member of the parliament, doesn't have power to interpret the 1997 constitution. It's only the High Court that can do it. So when we are not satisfied with what the president did, let us go and challenge it at the High Court. High Court or the Supreme, uh, Supreme Court? Court so, at the Supreme Court. Let's go and killing it at the Supreme Court. And this is exactly what is what is happening. So when people say that you're supporting the president in sacking Yakumba Jete, Yakumba is my colleague. For goodness and heaven's sake, people have to be careful about that one. What? What I want people to understand is I'm a sitting member of National Assembly. I will not do anything against the 1997 Constitution, and I will not entertain anyone to do it. So when the president takes any decision, we know that it's not right. We have where we can challenge it. I didn't condemn those who echo their uh, ill will. They are lack of idea, uh, dissatisfaction about the president's move. That is fine. That's a democracy. We have to, people have their own opinion. And I didn't condemn that one. That is fine. But all what I was saying, even that very, very day when the meeting emerged, what I told them is that we don't have the power. We don't have the mandate to do this one. Let us call for someone who have a technique, who, have, who, know, who can interpret the constitution for us and see whether the president have the power to do this or he doesn't have the power to do this. Or else, let us go to the court and then challenge it. And, and when the Supreme Court intervened, there was an uh, injunction that was struck out by the Supreme Court. Um, you know, the injunction to stay the swearing in of um, for the Gassama. And then effectively, it, it looks like President Barrow is r now running away with this issue. He, he appears to be winning here, even though the, um, the sacking itself, the essence of the sacking itself has not been determined, the, concluded yet. Um, when that came, did you agree with the Supreme Court's decision to allow the, the National Assembly to, you know, uh, proceed with life by installing uh, this other guy for but the I think, I think this is a very simple question. I think you have answered this to yourself because I have even answered this before. Come to I tell you, Supreme Court, they are the only body that have the power. But you can agree and disagree with yeah, the that Supreme is, that, Court. That's what I'm saying. Even, this is what I'm saying. I say that I go by the decision of the Supreme Court because they are the ones who, who interpret the 1997 Constitution. If they say that the president, it is possible, then I have, what, who am I to say that it cannot work? But if they say that the president doesn't have the power, then I will stand, stand out and say, no, the president cannot do this. I'll bring you back again uh, to this issue of taking money from the president. <laughs> How many times did Lamin Cham give you 10,000? Well, you, uh, maybe Lamin Cham will be in a better position to answer that question. No, but you. the money was given to you, so you are also in a, in a very good position you, to all, answer all, this. all what this is saying is all accusations. Can, can, you, just, say can you just tell me, uh, give me a clear evidence that you have taken this money from Lamin Cham, this is what you signed? Did you have any? No, I, I, I am asking you. No, this is what I'm saying. Do you, do, you, do, you have any, do, you ha do you have any? These are just reports no, exactly. out there. No, this these is what are I'm saying. These are reports. These are reports. So I just, want to, I just want to know, I just want to know, for, for me to be on, this, on the safer side, I just want to know how much money, if any, if any, <laughs> have you received? I say from that these are based on accusations. If so, they want to know, so if, now, if, they, if you so, want to know, so or now, if anybody want to know how much money that I've collected from Lamy Cham, come with the evidence telling me that this is what the voucher that you signed from Lamy Cham. This is what you've been taking from Lamy Cham. You, so now you are saying you didn't take anything. Well, I'm not saying I didn't take any one thing from Lamy Cham. What so I'm telling how, you, that, how much? So tell what, me now. What I'm telling you, you, how much did you? What I'm telling you, if yes. you want to know how much I take from Lamy Cham, yes, you go outside and do your finding. Come up with an evidence. This is all based on accusations. But you are not going to say. Oh, no, I'm not going to talk about that one. If you want to know how much I collect from Lamy Cham, come with your evidence. But honor honorable, for accountability's sake, you are a national assembly member. I tell you, this is, there's nothing you like... Should, you should not be hiding some of these things. Yeah, you, but should, there is you, should be, you should be honest look, enough look. To, to... Because Gambians are watching you. You yeah. should be honest and tell Gambians, okay, this is what I took for accountability purposes. Yeah, but there's nothing like this accountability issue. This I told you since that beginning, this is more of a political... Because people think this is corruption, in fact. This Some is people are calling it corruption. No, no problem. And, and MP no, cannot go no, about no. taking money from, from people. No, every Gambian, this is why we have the new Gambian. Every Gambian has the right to his own opinion. They have their right to say that it's a corruption. They have the right that it's a bribe or whatever they want. But I know very well, I have not been involved in any corruption. And I have not been bribed, and I will never be bribed by anybody. 
I know that one very, very, very well. So this is why I say that if you want to have, you know, I say journalists, when we're putting up some of these things, go to extra mile, dig deep, come with the evidence, put the evidence before me and tell me this is what is happening and ask me questions. But right now you're telling me that this is all accusations. You're okay. telling me... One of, one of your colleagues, a National, National Assembly member for Serekunda, yeah. was quoted as saying mm -hmm. that at one point mm -hmm. it was you mm -hmm. who gave him 10,000. But he didn't tell you that I took the $10,000 from the president or from the Alamin Cham, did he? I, I wouldn't know who you so, took this money to. So this is what why he said was that you are the one who gave him the 10,000 and the 10,000, a thousand came from the president. If you want that one to clear, we clear to you. Try and work on a debate. Inform the, uh, invite that very National Assembly member. Let us be on the, uh, the platform and discuss about this issue. Then it will be very clear to you. And then between that one, so you also go back, dig deep, do all your finding, get all your evidence and put it on the table and let's discuss about it. But I can assure Gambians, I am who I am. And I work in the banking industry before joining politics. And I have never been influenced by money or whatsoever there. So I cannot be influenced by anything. My support for the president is based on principle. And that principle is he has NDP to implement it. And I am going to rally behind him 100% to make sure that those ones are achieved. And then anywhere that I go, I keep talking to people about this issue. And I will continue doing it. And then if God, if we got here, uh, with God will, inshallah, uh, even the coming weekend, I will be going for a uh, constituency tour whereby I'm going to dialogue with, uh, I'm going to enjoy with a lot of my people, my electorates, and, and have a discussion with them. It wasn't going to be on party line, it's going to be on anyone living within Latifun Asabiji. So now let's talk about your work as an MP, the National Assembly, um, the one of the three arms of the government. You have a, a, a very important role as a law-making body. Uh, what, how would you, uh, what would be your assessment of the National Assembly in terms of um, the role that it plays in a democracy? What would, since 2017 to date, or 2018, uh, when you, uh, you know, the new National Assembly came into being, um, how would you assess what you have done in terms of advancing the democracy of the country? Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Njai, for putting that question to me. I think that's a very important question that you come up with. You're talking about what have I done during my tenure in office, or what's my role as a parliamentarian since I stepped in as an MP of Latikuna Sabiji. Mr. I want to remind the entire viewers that this is a new democracy that we are trying to nurture. We know know that the past 22 years, there's a lot, a lot has happened in this country. And that one, in those days, we all know how parliament was operating. But thank God today, if you go to parliament, you know that everybody has his own opinion. Everybody talk based on your understanding of issues. Nobody interferes with our job in the parliament. I can, I can tell you that one. And then looking at some of what we have achieved, this parliament have achieved. You look at all these uh, reforms that are going on. They are all because of the parliament. These are all acts of parliament. If we say no to it, not, none of these things will come up. The, the TRRC that we're talking about is an act of a parliament. Commission of Inquiry is an act of parliament. CRC is an act of parliament. Yes. So these are all reforms that the parliament is contributing to make sure that we have the Gambia that we all want. Yes. So this is what we are doing. And I can tell you, this is a new parliament. At least now Gambia, not 100%, but at least 60% of the Gambian population know that we have a parliament that is doing something. 60% of the Gambians are interested in the parliament issues nowadays. How about the issue of oversight? Because we have seen a lot of bills brought to the National Assembly, for example. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that would be a standoff, the Minister of Finance, for example, the SAB. Sometime last year, there was some issues surrounding that. Yeah. And also, um, the, reset, the, the State of the National Address, yeah, the that's, President that's, came that's, and, and gave, you know, said a lot of, spoke on a number of issues, you know, backed by statistics. Yeah, but this, these statistics, some people think, are cooked. 
This do you is think the National Assembly is doing, uh, the National Assembly members are doing, doing enough in terms of scrutinizing, in terms of making sure that these statistics are in fact correct? Because some people are saying some of these departments would just go and cook these statistics and give them to the president. And okay. then the president thank, thank just you, come thank you very much. Them. I think this is very important. You talking about the SAP, you talking about the SONA, that is state of national address and so many issues. Looking at those things, it tells you that we have the parliament that we really wish. This is the parliament that, you know, Gambians really, really, you know, they should be, they should relax and allow them to do their job. The SAB came in the parliament and there was a series of debate, everybody come with your opinions. This is what parliament, this is how parliament operates. Okay? And that's exactly what happened. We follow all due process, due and procedures in the parliament to pass the SAP or whatsoever. The SONA came, that's the state of national address. The first day when the president tabled the bill on the 19th of uh, September, it was adjoined to the 23rd of September. At that adjournment, we feel that because section 77, subsection 1 says that the president should come to the parliament once in every year. But if you go to section 77, subsection 2 says that the, uh, the National Assembly may put a request. At that very Monday, we find out that we understand that the National Assembly did not put any request because we believe that when the president gives a speech, the vice president should be in office in the parliament to represent the president. That's what section 77, subsection 3 says. That didn't happen. Then we said that we're not going to hold this debate until if the, uh, the vice president come back to the parliament. And this is exactly what happened. But you, but you, were, you were not impressed with the way and manner it was done. No, you because, said, because, you said. Yeah, because yes. people have to be careful what, what's happened exactly. That's what I'm telling you that very Monday, that the National Assembly, that's section 77, subsection 2 say National Assembly may put the request. There was a lot of talking on that very day when that happened. People think that those who didn't say, who voted, vote against the constitution. But I can tell them that they did not. They have where they can hold on. That is by saying that the National Assembly did not put any request before the office of the president. So therefore, we cannot adjourn the debate that very day. And those who voted yes, they have the right because they could say that yes, the president is not in, the vice president is not here. Let us just adjourn and then assign the National Assembly Authority or National Clerk of the National Assembly to put a request as says in section 77 sub section 2. I wasn't in for simply because when that issue come out, and my name was mentioned that I voted, I have voted against the motion that we should continue the debate. But you did not? I did not take part in that voting. You abstained? All. I abstained. Why totally. did you abstain? Because I didn't, it wasn't worth it to me. It wasn't, it wasn't sound but necessary. But abstinence is something that I have a problem with. Like, because you have to sit, tell Gambians where you belong to. You cannot be a fence. Yeah, you happened? cannot be sitting, you have your one leg in and then one no, leg no, no. out. I you have to, I have to. I can, be, I can give you the reason why I have said. Yes. Because I believe that that very day, the National Assembly did not put any request. So when we are joining, we can adjoin, fine. But we cannot adjoin based on saying that National Section 77, subsection 2 say that the, the president have to appear. Or 77 subsection 2 say the vice president have to come. So this is the reason why I didn't take part in that voting. And, uh, and you, you, because you thought the National Assembly was in the wrong in not putting in a request yeah, I thought earlier. That, yeah, that I thought that the Parliament National Assembly should put that request to the president. That's why I didn't take part in that voting at that very moment. That's what I think. And that's the right procedure. But were you in agreement or in support you, you are saying the process was faulty, yes. But were you in agreement in having the president or the vice president appear before the I am in 100% agreement that the president or the vice president should come to parliament and listen to us. We cannot be in the parliament speaking to ourselves. This is what we are trying to say. But, but I interviewed you when the yes. president gave his speech. Speech, yes. And you said this was the best speech the president has exactly, ever Exactly, exactly. Well, now you're not, ever, talking, you're, not, you're, not asking me, you're not talking about, you're not asking me about the speech of the president, but you're, talking, you're asking me about the procedures that we take that very day. But you didn't but, but, you, so Yes, but the reason why so, I actually... If you come to the sonar, the reason, if, you the to, if, you come, if you come to the sonar, then yes. I will tell you why I say this is the best speech. Uh, yes, b b because the reason why I asked you this is, from the look of things, you were satisfied. Yes. So whether the president comes or he doesn't come, it doesn't really matter. No, to no, you, no. Right? When, 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 when you say that you are satisfied, you still, you still have issues that you need to put on the, 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 the president. So president come in and give that speech, even if I'm satisfied with it, that one. But we have to look at the side of the law. What the law say have to happen. Then the president, I can be satisfied, but you are not, maybe you will not be satisfied. You have an issue that you need to put forward. And that issue, you know, the vice president have to be yeah, to listen to you. 
so that he can just relate that message back to the president, accepted by the constitution. So when I say I am satisfied, I doesn't mean that the president is not, or the vice president should not come to the parliament and listen to the MPs. And, and the parliament appeared to have been held ransom by the president's, I mean, you know, uh, refusal to appear himself. Instead, he wanted the vice president to appear, who was in faraway US. We, the, the parliament had to wait until October 3rd. To, that, okay, let me, let, 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 let me put this to you. for the vice president to come and, and, and take part in the debate. Is, is there what do any, you make of that? Okay, is there any section of the constitution that said the president must or shall May, appear? it said may. Okay, no, it just, said just, may. just wait. Yes. No, if you go to may law, there's a difference between shall and may. If you say something may, I mean it is not compulsory. But, but if you say shall, Happen. But, but this, if you look at that's what I'm trying to come. This look. can also be compulsory because if the president blatantly flouts the invitation, the president could be held in contempt. But is that is that is that is that exactly what happened? That did not happen, of so course. Exactly. But, but what I'm saying is mm -hmm. this delay, it took about two weeks, okay. almost two weeks before the vice president could return. The country needs to move, remember? <laughs> no, it was in two weeks. I think I can, because we have that uh, Sona debate war, so it took place on the third of uh, October. But what I'm telling you, there is no law in our constitution that says that the president shall appear in the parliament. What it says, the section 77, subsection 2, says that the National Assembly may put the request. But it went further to say that the vice president shall appear. That's what it says. So this is what I'm trying to put to you. So that very day when we adjourned, that was on the 23rd. Then the National Assembly went to put a request to the office of the president, requesting the procedure that we need to follow, requesting the president or the vice president to come to the parliament. Because when they said section 77, subsection 2, the, device, the National Assembly may request the president to come to the parliament. But it went further, section 77, subsection 3, to say that, says that the vice president shall. So this is what happened. So now let me bring you, because one issue that was missing in the president's address there, a lot of people, including uh, some of your co colleagues, expected the president to address this issue. But for some reason, he did not. What's, the what's that issue, issue of three years. Okay. The three years, some people were anticipating that the president would come, come there. And uh, I mean, I, I know but time and again, uh, he has said that he was, he was going to stay uh, for five years. But... Um, the members of the National Assembly expected him to address this issue, but he did not. What do you make of that? Well, many people think the president should talk about the three years issue, three years, five years. But in what capacity is he going to talk about that? Do that. That's what I want people to understand. As president okay. who promised, or as president who then candidate, was okay. then candidate promised Gambians that are, hey, you know what? I am not greedy. I am just going to be there for three years and no, then step you know, aside you know, and then go and uh, take you know, care the, of my the, business. The most interesting thing about this whole issue is that the only what people, some people want to hear is that the president said that I should step, I'm going to step down at three years. But the president did not say that I'm going to step down at, three, at the end of the three years. Even if he tell us that, you know, if he, if he paint the wall white and everybody is seeing that the president have says that he, the wall is painted white, we will still say that, no, the president, Mr. President, you paint this wall white, but there's some black inside it. As long as he didn't say that I'm going to step down at the end of the three years. But notwithstanding, we, we, we move ahead. The reason why the president did, didn't mention that uh, the three years, five years issue, I wouldn't know. And I did, no, you gave it, let me just conclude. <laughs> I, I don't mind wait for us to talk about, uh, the president talk about the three years or five years issue. Because what I know is that section 63, cater for the president to the elected president to suffer five years. What section 65 went for that to say is that the president can resign if he wishes. So this why, is why, why, this is why, why I always why, tell people, so when why, the president why, borrow one, he, he can even resign today. But saying so that, now, because why, looking at that why, speech, why the president talk about the policies and the programs of the government and the burning issues, some burning issues that, that is going around. He talked about that one. <laughs> but many people believe that three years, five years issue is a burning issue. But to me, I didn't see that one as a born in issue. You don't think the three no, years, five I don't years see, is no, not a born no, in issue? No, 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 no. Currently, and you if have I am, a let pressure me tell you something, group. Let currently, currently. Let me tell you something. If I am in the food, I, the, the, if, I, if I am in the seat of the president that day, I'm also not going to talk about it. You know why? You're going to deliberately ignore I'm it? I'm going to ignore it. I'm not going to talk about it. Currently, you have a pressure group that is out there, that is determined to 
and show that the president leaves office in December. See, that's, 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 and, that, now, that. and these are Gambians. And what you have to understand, Honorable, is that the majority, even if the 90% of Gambians are behind President Barrow mm -hmm. to stay in office for five years, but that 10%, the majority is not doing that 10% a favor by listening to, to them and okay. engaging them. It is, in fact, doing itself a favor. So President Barrow, in essence, would be doing himself a favor by addressing this issue, by engaging these people, you don't think? And now you are telling me he, you, would, you would deliberately ignore this you issue? Know, you, know, you know, this is the beauty of democracy. When we have a president group outside there talking about the president stepping down after three years, is their right? Is their constitutional right? They can go ahead and do it. But what the only advice that I want to give them is that you cannot, you cannot force the president so stay out of office after three years by force. You cannot use a force to. No, they, they are not. They no, are let not, me tell you. Let me tell you. This is what I'm trying force. to tell you. Okay. The, the I'm, just, I'm just. I'm just giving a word of advice to them. But they have all right. They have all right to claim their issue, saying that the president should step down at the end of three years. But let's remember, there's another president group also saying that the president should be in office for five years. Where do you and belong? Is that, no, you don't. Where I belong to is what the constitution of the Gambia says. What that does the constitution that is, that is say? It's a five years. But you Time said now, but you are, you, are, you are trying to contradict yourself. You are saying that the president can also resign today. And now you are telling what, me the this president... This is what I'm saying. So that would be an, a weak, you know, argument. No, it, right? is a, it is a very, very, very strong argument. My argument is based on section 63, that the president can stay in office uh, for a period of five years. But he can also but stay in office not, for one hour, right? That's what I'm saying. Notwithstanding, the president can resign even today. Because it is provided in section 65. So now, now it is going to be... But my take in this is that I am supporting the president to go for five years. Based on many reasons. That Name a few. Few, I'm terrible, a few among them is that the reforms that are going on right now. There is a CRC going on and it is not completed. The CRC is going on, it's not completed. TRRC is going on, it is not completed. There is a SSRR, SSR is coming. That's the security sector reforms is coming, it's going on. This, all these reforms are not completed Do yet. you know what the chairman of the Operation 3 Years Vietnam Movement said in that regard? Do you know? What did he say? What he said is that President Adam Barrow was asked by the Gambian people to mop the floor, but he went and started boiling the rice. Nobody asked him to go and boil the rice. Okay. These uh, many, many projects that you are naming, very, all, the, all these very, development, very, very grand think, development projects that you are... Nobody asked this president to okay. go and, think, and, think, and roll them out. I projects think. that may take for 10 years. Because he even, in a recent interview, said even five years is not enough. Okay. Someone okay. who told Gambians that, hey, look, I am doing only three years, and now you are coming and telling Gambians even five years is not enough. Okay, I think that is very important, okay? The chairman of three years, as I said earlier on, have all the right to see, speak in that line. But what I want to remind people is that we're talking about the coalition agreement. But was it the president stepping down at three years? Was that the only agreement in that coalition? Why are we not holding them accountable for the rest of the agreements that they leave behind? Why are you talking about only the three years? Let me tell you one thing. I think counting, it is the one that matters no, most no, no, no. to Gambians. Counting doesn't start from 10. It starts from 1. If you want to count, you don't say that let me start from 10, 11, 12. You say 0 or you start from 1. That's where counting starts. If we are to be realistic to ourselves, let us hold everybody accountable for failing to stick to the MOU. That's the from A. All Every agreement that is within, that is embedded within that MOU. If you do that one, if that one happens, Mr. Nja, I can tell you today, I am going to champion the three years issue for Adam Abaro to step down. But so long, that didn't happen. I asked Gambian people, and I'm still going to talk to them, let us stick to the five years mandate. If you have anything, wait for 2021, it's just at the corner. You have your voters card, you own your voters card. Go and vote for whosoever that you want. You know, in this issue, when we are analyzing, let us not be biased. Let us just be realistic in it. If you want to hold President Adam Abaru accountable, let us hold the rest of the agreement, every bit of it that was left behind, let us put them accountable to that or not so. That will help a lot. If you do that, people like me will understand that, look, this is not about the issue of Adam Abaru only. It's about the issue of the whole coalition uh, executive. That's what happened. Because you tell me at the beginning of the interview, the president is an executive president. What makes him an executive president? So why are we talking about the three years issue? So I, am just, I just want the chairman of the three years just now. Who is Mr. Ngai? I know him. He's a brother. Yes. I know him very, very well. Yes. <laughs> Abdul is my good brother. Yes. Okay? I will still call upon him to go and look at that agreement. 
Let him come and enjoy me. Let us make sure that these people are held accountable for every bit of it. But if any one of them are lacking behind, then you cannot hold president accountable because you say self say that he is an executive president. But him also and the rest of the team, anybody who is advocating for that three years, we need to understand issues. Let us look at the realistic things that are realistic and then work on it. What I can tell as I tell you, if the rest of the MOU is being considered, I will champion the president to step down after three years. Honorable Sekumaro, thank you very much for thank speaking you. to us there. Thank you. <laughs> that was Honorable Seku Maro, National Assembly Member for Latikunda Sabaji, speaking to us there. With that, we'll come to the end of this interview. Thank you very much. Until next time, my name is Laming Jai. Goodbye. Okay. <laughs>